Hey everybody, we're going to talk about the put Excel command in Stata. Uh, very briefly, as the name implies, what this command allows us to do is put output from Stata into an Excel file in a desired location. Uh, so much like the put docx command, right, that can take Stata output and put it into a Word document, the idea is to make it easier to format results, and in the case of putting things into an Excel file, easier to kind of further analyze specific results. Uh, so in terms of uses of this, uh, if your goal is to generate a nicely formatted table for the use in a, in a paper, I would probably prefer using one of the uh, commands that puts the results right into a, uh, a word processing program, right into Word. Uh, so put doc x, as doc, uh, s tab, s out, lots of options there uh, that you can look at. So when the put Excel command really becomes useful is in that case when there's specific outcomes from say summary statistics or uh, regression output that you want to be able to compare across models. So in a previous uh, video on the finite distributed lag model, I showed an example of how to use put Excel in extracting the information criterion from different lag models so you can compare one to the other, but I didn't really show what the command is really capable of or, or really explain uh, what, what the options are. And I'll just scratch the surface here, but just to give us an idea. Um, so, before we look at any data here, just to get an idea, and this mirrors exactly what you see in the put docx command, uh, it starts off by just telling Stata that we want to use this put Excel command and setting a file to create to put the output. So the command simply put Excel set, and then whatever we type after that is the file name. So let's just call it whatever test one. And the file hasn't been created yet, but it's it's ready to be used, right? And where that file is going to show up is going to be in your working directory, right? So it's always a good idea to know where that is uh, so you don't have to go searching around your computer. Um, so I'm in a Mac here, uh, and if you go up to uh, File in Stata, the option Change Working Directory is right there. So I just have mine set to the desktop. So we're going to see a, a file pop up there. So. Uh, you could do something as simple like this, right? So the command put Excel, and then we type in the cell that we want to locate in that file that we just created, that test one file. So I want to put something in cell A10, and we could just go equal, and then whatever's on the other end of that equal sign is going to be what's going to go into the into the file. So before we see how to refer to specific uh, regression or summary output, let's just put some text in there just to see what happens. So in quotes, we can just put, I don't have much to say, so let's just say hi, and then look up in the upper right hand corner there, there we are, and a file has appeared on my desktop called test1, so if I open that up, here in A10 we have the word hi, so there that was, so that worked nicely. So let's close that out. We don't need to save it. So now let's take a look at some, some data, right? So I've got uh, from the Federal Reserve Economic Database, I've got the federal funds rate and industrial production here. And let's again kind of imagine that we're running a time series regression across multiple specifications. So let's go ahead and run just a simple example regression so we can get some results here. Uh, and let's run the first difference in industrial production as a function of the first difference, and this is monthly data, of the federal funds rate. And we see all that output, and the thing to recognize is that all of these coefficients, standard errors, t-stats, etc., are stored behind the scenes as elements in a matrix, right? So they are scalars, and they are matrices, and they are tables that we can then refer to internally within Stata in kind of future commands, or, in our case, to export into another setting, right? So if we type out, following our regression here, matrix list R table. So that gives us 
all the same numbers that we have up here, right? but now it's just in our matrix format, right? So it's a nine by two matrix. Uh, the nine is set based on all of the statistics that are generated, and the two is dictated by the number of coefficients that are estimated. Here we have the intercept and the slope, so it's only two. If we run a regression with an additional lag, it'll be a nine by three matrix of output. But the coefficient, the B, the standard error, the t-stat, p-value, et cetera, are all going to be there column by column. So it's all the same information, just reorganized, again, in a way that it's easier to refer to. So we can actually refer to specific elements within that matrix. Okay. Now, the other thing that's going to be really helpful here is if we type out e return list, this gives the locations, essentially, or the the internal names of all the other output in the regression, the other than the, the coefficients and associated statistics, right? So we have E in number of observations, the degrees of freedom of the model, basically the number of X variables, E, D, F underscore M, et cetera. And if we wanted to call up the F statistic, I can imagine that would be useful, the R squared, the adjusted R squared, all of these can be referred to now with these specific names. And then we have all of the, the labels in our regression output here uh, as well, stored as uh, macros. So now the only thing that's left is to use that same command, the put Excel, the name of the cell that you want to go into, and then equals whatever you want to see there. Right? So imagine we can do something like this. So let's go put Excel A1, and we'll put some text in here, and we're going to keep track of the number of lags right, that we're going to add into our model. So put Excel A1 equal to lags in quotes. So that should have updated our file. Uh, and then next to it, let's go put Excel B1 equal to adjusted R squared. So that's what we want to capture now. Okay. So what's going to be in the first column is going to be basically the number, again, of x variables in our regression. Every time we add a lag, we add a new slope coefficient to estimate. So this isn't going to work when you have multiple uh, variables uh, in more complicated scenarios, but it's a, kind of a cheat way that we can do it here, is we can go put Excel in cell A2 equal to the degrees of freedom of the model, so E, D, F, M. And we're going to put this in the single quotation, so just like you have to use within a loop, uh, so we use the left single quote, and then we go E parentheses D, F underscore M, which in this case is 1, and then end parentheses and right hand single quote. So that will be able to essentially label the regression that this value is going to come from. And then we'll say put Excel in column, I'm sorry, column B, cell 2. And here we want the adjusted R squared from this model. So this is going to be, again, the single quote, and then E, R2 underscore A, end parenthesis, right hand, single quote. Now let's see how we did. Let's open back up our test one file here, and there we go. So not super exciting, but there it is. When we ran the model with one lag, here is the adjusted R squared. Now you can see where this is going, right? Let's go ahead and run the model again, but with a, an additional coefficient, and capture the adjusted R squared here. So clearly, this is going to be a lot, a uh, lot more useful within, say, a looping format. And every element in that loop, every iteration in that loop, is going to add a new element into the regression and capture the adjusted R squared. And then we would kind of track, okay, where is that adjusted R squared maximized? So obviously, just one, obviously, just one little example of of how to use this. But think about this list of regression output as kind of, well, 
the upper part of that list, all the statistics, as your set of options, right? So when this is going to be useful depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, obviously, go ahead and check the, uh, the help put Excel uh, within Stata, and there's a ton of different options. And you can, if you have the patience, uh, create really nicely formatted tables uh, within Excel, all just by using commands from within Stata. So hopefully that was a little bit helpful, just seeing how this can be used and how that uh, information is stored within Stata after your regression. Got any questions, put them in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.